Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Aaron Dawson. I'm the DevRel Communications Manager at Oracle. And today I'm speaking with Lucas Jalema. How's it going, Lucas? How are you today? I'm doing very well. It's almost weekend, by the way, so it's about to get even better. That's right. Uh, I'm excited about that, but I'm also excited to talk with you about a series of articles you've written about Go and OCI. Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. And I'm particularly excited about this article series because to my understanding up till now, there hasn't been a lot of discussion about this particular language with this particular cloud service with Go and OCI. So I'm really excited to talk with you. And before we get into the details of that kind of thing, I'm curious, and I just wanna start here, why Go? You know, what are the benefits of, you know, Go versus other languages when it comes to OCI, other languages that can maybe do the same things as Go? You know, why Go? Well, first of all, because it's fun. It's, it's fun to learn something new. And to me, Go is fairly new. As a language, it's not completely new. It has been around for more than a decade. Mm -hmm. But it still is a much more, uh, more modern language than languages such as Python or Java or JavaScript. And as a result, Go has a number of built-in mechanisms and syntax that make things that we want to do all the time very easy, such as exposing HTTP servers or calling out to HTTP services, working with uh, JSON, um, automating the build process or the testing process. Some things that Java can do today weren't uh, around when Java was first created and was sort of built in after the fact. In Go, they were built in well, before the fact or at the same time as Go was created. So some things are more comfortable, if you like. Yeah. And also the way Go applications build into binary executables that are very small and it started very quickly. Um, in some cases, it doesn't really matter. If you have a large enterprise application that keeps on running for weeks, then of course the Java enterprise application is completely fine. But if you want to, to create something in a serverless architecture, for example, having a very small application that starts up very, very rapidly is uh, definitely a boon. Absolutely, a boon indeed. So as an extension of that, why go on OCI. So what benefits does OCI offer for a Go application? Well, to be honest, it's basically the same set of benefits that you get in other languages. So whether you work with Python or Node or Java, or probably even C Sharp, although I don't know a lot about C Sharp, when you work with these languages on OCI, you have a wealth of services and facilities that you can leverage. And the same applies to Go. So there is a Go SDK that allows you to easily interact with the OCI services from a Go application. Similar SDKs are available for the other languages. So there's no special benefit to using Go, except of course for the benefits that Go um, has everywhere. Uh, but yeah. Go is supported as a primary citizen language uh, on OCI, just like the, the other main languages. Yeah, and you mentioned JSON earlier and that's got me thinking about APIs, how hard is it, or how difficult is it to set up a REST API using, you know, the OCI suite of tools that you have available to you? Uh, well, it is very, very simple, as you would expect. Um, just implementing an uh, HTTP serving application that you can then expose as an, uh, as an API is just a few lines of code. It's as simple as it is in Node, and it's uh, quite a bit simpler than it is in Java. Mm -hmm. And then on the OCI, using the API gateway, it's very easy to expose that application um, as a form formally managed API with all the benefits of the, of the API gateway. Yeah, absolutely. And I understand that part of this article series uh, cover covers or discusses the Go SDK for OCI, can you talk a little bit about what that is and what your experience has been like working with that SDK? Sure. And they have been quite good. Um, as you probably know, all the services on, uh, on OCI 
are exposed through REST APIs, and you can make calls into these uh, into the, these REST APIs to get the functionality of the services, like creating an object or retrieving an object from the object from the object storage, or um, subscri subscribing to a stream and consuming events from a screen a stream, sorry, or invoking a function. <laughs> Just someone <laughs> screaming about SDKs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, making these REST API calls isn't particularly hard, but you do have to sign them in order to uh, have the authorization right. And signing these calls is a little bit um, complex, or at least um, it's a bit of work. Now, by using the SDK, um, all the interaction at the REST API level is wrapped in libraries that are written in, uh, in the native language. So in the, in the case of the Go SDK, instead of having to invoke REST APIs to get the benefit from the OCI services, you can just uh, use uh, Go functions and Go types. And under the covers, the SDK uh, takes care of all the API interaction and all this uh, all, uh, all the signing of the of the requests that has to take place. And there's one additional benefit: uh, if you run your Go application inside OCI itself, so either inside a VM on OCI mm -hmm. or inside a container or a function on on OCI, mm -hmm. then the SDK knows how to leverage. Um, instance principle and resource principle authentication. So um, because it's running inside OCI, you can assign permissions to either the function or the container, uh, or, or rather the instance, the compute instance on which the container or the application is running. And you don't need to provide an OCI configuration file with um, a private key to your application because it can simply inherit uh, these um, privileges um, from the principle is it is running in, mm -hmm. and the SDK takes care of that as well. So that really makes your code a lot easier. Absolutely. Well, this this article series is really comprehensive. I mean, it doesn't start from the bare bare basics. I think you know the first article talks about prerequisites, having a little bit of a Go background, having an environment set up, but it really gets into a lot of deeply technical stuff and it covers the gamut of setting up you know uh, just oci devops go it's it's super broad based so we could talk about it all day but to wrap up um i just want to know like what do you love about deploying an app on oci and i i know you've You've been using Oracle products for a long time, but particularly deploying an app on OCI, like what do you love about that? What differentiates that than deploying an app on, you know, another cloud service? Loaded question, I guess. Yeah. Some aspects, of course, are the same between cloud services and the idea that you can write an application locally um, push it to a Git repository, and then completely automatically that application gets turned into a deployable artifact that gets deployed somewhere, and all of a sudden your application is available to anyone on, on, on the internet. That gives you a feeling of, of, of power um, yeah. that well, is still a little bit exhilarating. Yes. Uh, but it's the same on OCI as it is on Azure or other cloud services. Sure. So to me, uh, OCI has uh, has been an environment in which I've been active now for well as long as it, as as it has been around. So I guess that's probably four years, maybe five years now. Twenty eighteen, yeah, yeah, something like that. And uh, it is intuitive, and um, it started out with a small, far smaller number of services, obviously, than there is today. But it has been extending in a very consistent way. Mm -hmm. So using one service gives me some foundation to draw from when I, I start using other services. And besides, the services tie into, into, uh, into each other as well. Yeah. So the OCI DevOps service, for example, is still fairly new, but it works well with um, the Kubernetes service okay. and with the function service, of which I'm uh, both a big fan. 
Yesterday, I've been giving a preview of a new uh, application configuration service that mm-hmm. will tie in with DevOps and the other services as well to provide uh, application com- uh, configuration data that you don't have to include then in your uh, in your application. And again, it's this building of services that work together that give me additional, what is it? Facilities, additional power yeah. almost, things yeah. that I don't have to program it, uh, that I can benefit from. It's a bit like the old application server, but then um, of course it's, it's not an application server running locally, mm-hmm. but it's this big continent stretching fabric that I can put my applications on and that provide an enormous power to the, to the applications. But still, it feels as if I can understand it, as if I understand what's happening and how things are tied together. And well, maybe that could that that could work on on other clouds as well. But it certainly works for me on OCI. Absolutely, dynamism, cohesion. These are these are these make you feel really good. And as you said, powerful. You're seeing, I and, and especially when it comes to Go, I'm really excited for people to read how Go figures into that that story that we're telling. Um, That was really articulate. Uh, So speaking of Go, speaking of this article series, if that wasn't a teaser, I don't know what is. So let's, let's wrap up with that. We'll have links in the description for this video to these individual articles as they're released. Lucas, thanks so much for chatting with me today. You're very welcome. Cool. Have a good weekend. Thank you. You too.